In September 2023, I set off on a crazy adventure to help my 77-year-old friend Steve realise a lifelong dream of hiking 230 miles across the Scottish Highlands. We knew the trail would take us through some of the most remote and wild landscapes Scotland has to offer. And although the scenery would be stunning, the terrain would be a challenge. But nothing had quite prepared us for what we had in store. Join us on our adventure. Okay, a very good morning to everybody. Um, I don't even know what day this is anymore, but we are in Barrysdale Boffy, are we? Is this what it's called? Barrysdale. Barrysdale Boffy. Now, we stayed here yesterday as well. We had a bit of a rest day because of the storm. It was crazy. Uh, the wind was like 30 miles an hour. The rain was coming down. People that had camped outside had to come in in the middle of the night to the Boffy because their tents had blown away. Just, uh, yeah, crazy ridiculous. So we thought, oh, we'll give it a rest day, see if it calms down a bit. And um, this morning, the winds are still 30 miles an hour. The rain has teetered off for a bit, but it's meant to come back full force this afternoon. So we're having an early, early start today. It's uh, about quarter past seven, I think. And yeah, we're gonna try and get to um, the tea house, <laughs> tea rooms. Kinlock Horn. Kinlock Horn tea rooms, if we can get some food because we're running dangerously low on supplies because we've had to take longer than expected. But we've had a nice rest. We're feeling refreshed, replenished, energized, and ready to go. It's definitely a goggles day. So I'm gonna put them on, let's do it. Despite the strong winds, I had been really looking forward to hiking this section around Barrysdale Bay and Lockhorn. The dark clouds early morning were looming, but they didn't distract from how beautiful this place was. The heavy rain had churned the trail up into a swamp. Some parts were tough going. <laughs> As we rounded the corner, we escaped the stronger gusts of wind and could really take in the magnificent views of Lockhorn. Now this bit is lovely down by the lock. A bit up and downy, but very nice. 4.3 miles left to go to get to the tea rooms. It's just started spitting, but nothing too bad. Luckily, we are the right side of these mountains to get protected from that really, really strong wind. So happy days, yes. I always really enjoy hiking in autumn. The colors of the bracken and the leaves turning was really pretty. Steve! Yes, my dear. We just had a nice little snack stop, didn't we? Mmm, tasty. Enjoying today? I am. It's very, very, very nice to be here. Really good walk. Picturesque. There are a couple of short, steep climbs and descents on this section. But compared to what we had tackled on previous days, it was quite relaxing and actually one of my favourite mornings on the trail. Is this a little sprinkling of sunshine on the horizon? Possibly. Mm. Little patches of blue sky. You never know. We're at the top of the second climby bit. Yeah, then downhill and then it's pretty low level from there. So we're doing all right. Doing okay.
So I'm just plodding on through the bog and I hear Steve shouting at me what sounded like car, car. And I thought, he's finally lost the bloody plot, completely lost the plot. He was actually saying pause. <laughs> I was going, car, what are you on about? Let me spin you around anyway, this bit's beautiful. Now, it had been days since we'd last had any 4G or phone service, so we're looking forward to catching up with family and friends briefly when we reached Kinloch Horn. But first, we needed to tackle some very slippery rocks. All the delays due to the weather meant we were running dangerously low on supplies. So when we got to the cafe, we needed to have a big lunch and also order some things to take away, as we were starving. Okay, well, we found the tea room. Uh, very happy to um, been able to get some proper food. It tasted wonderful. Um, now we're ready to head back out into the storm. Uh, we've got a big hill to climb and then we'll be looking for a wild camp spot tonight before the final push into Shillbridge tomorrow. We were now starting stage six on the hiker app, the 11 mile section into Shillbridge. We spotted a shelter and thought we would try and aim for that tonight. This meant we could get the first 300 meters climb out of the way, giving us a slightly easier day tomorrow. But this first bit of the climb was pretty steep. These look like flying goggles now, don't they? <laughs> well, that was a bit of a leg burner coming out of Kinloch Horn. I think we've done the steepest bit for now. We're only doing a bit of the climb today because we are late into the day now. We're going to find a wild camping spot and then hopefully get over the top early tomorrow morning because we've got a severe weather warning coming and uh, Storm Agnes, I think that's what it's called, is coming, it's coming for us and we're on the hardest section. <laughs> we can but laugh, we need to get to Shillbridge by tomorrow night. This is the plan. Our plan was to book a hotel in Shillbridge tomorrow night so we would be safe inside as the storm passed over. It would also give us a chance to have a proper shower and dry out our clothes and boots. The thought of sleeping in a warm bed was also pretty nice. But for now, the rain had stopped, the sun had come out and we could enjoy the fabulous scenery as we pushed on towards the little shelter. Hello, we are in the Shepherd's Hut. Today has been productive, a very productive day. Sorry, that's Steve making all the noise. He is boiling us some water so we can have some food. You can carry on, it's all right, don't you worry. Food is more important. We've had a really productive day. So we started off uh, at the Buffy. We walked to Kinlockhorn in the morning and had the biggest, fattest lunch ever. It was absolutely magnificent. And it was still quite early, it was only two o'clock when we left. We stayed a good couple of hours there so we could use the Wi-Fi and contact home and catch up with everything that we've missed in the last God knows how many days. And then we walked on another three miles to the Shepherd's Hut here um, just before the river crossing. Now it is quite high at the minute. Um, I think it's gonna go down a little bit overnight. It's gonna be quite dry in the night. So we are gonna wait it out and yeah, do it first thing in the morning. Uh, it's meant to stay dry in the morning, so we're gonna try and get that big climb done. And then when it all starts coming down, hopefully we'll be 
on the last legs into Shield Bridge, ready to pick up our supply boxes. Ah! We're hoping we can stay in the hostel, if not maybe the campsite or something like that when we get to Shield Bridge. Yeah, and uh, what else have I got to tell you lovely people? Well, it's going well. We've had our ups and downs, um, enjoying it, having a lovely time. There's been moments, of course, when we've been like, oh my God, we're leaving, we're quitting, we're quitting. But then, you know, it's all been weather related. Um, but then you get like little moments like this afternoon where the sun came out and we were like, no, we're so glad we're here. We're carrying on. So yeah, that is our little uh, shed live. Steve is going to stay in the shed. I have done the most wonky pitch, <laughs> wonky pitch wanger <laughs> with my tent just outside. So if bad weather does come in in the night, I know I can always just nip in here, which is good. Um, but I've done that so I can get away from Steve snoring because Steve snores like a machine and I can't take it anymore. So I am staying in the tent. Anyway, we'll catch you guys in the morning. Over and out. Bye. What a handy little shelter. As you can see here, I'm currently using the Harvey Mountain map layers on the app as it goes into much more detail. You can easily swap between map layers by clicking here. And if you prefer using OS maps, you can shuffle your chosen layer to the top and it will change it back for you. The Hiker app allows you to have three choices of map layer saved at any one time, so you can switch back and forth at different points on the trail, depending on the terrain. And of course, you can download these layers for offline use. Good morning, party people. <laughs> we had an interesting night's sleep last night. Uh, Steve got dripped on because this is not a waterproof shelter. <laughs> And I obviously was on a massive slope that way and also that way. So I was just like sliding down the tent all night, having to like pull myself up. It was a really fun game. So we haven't had much sleep, but the good news is the water levels have gone down significantly. So it's going to be okay to cross the river. Woo! So we can carry on our merry way to Shield Bridge. I'm not doing a long one this morning. It's dry at the minute, so we're going to make the most of that and we're going to get going. But yes, let's take some lovely footage and see what we've got in this little section. You keep telling yourself that, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Bloody lovely. What a glorious morning. The blue skies made up for the fact that we'd just been knee deep in freezing water straight off the bat. Da da da. Da 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 da. Da da da. We have got a cheeky 400 meter climb coming up very, very soon. So we are just removing some layers because it's going to be warm climbing up there, even though it's only about eight degrees at the minute, but effort, you know. <laughs> yeah, going to get up, get over the top, then 700 meters down into Shield Bridge. Mm -mm -mm. How high did that one come up? Over the knees. This area certainly felt wild and remote, a true taste of what was to come on the Cape Bath Trail. We really hope you're enjoying watching this adventure as much as we are doing it. If you are, please could we ask you a big favor to give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. 300 meters left to climb, making good progress. What time did you say it was? 10 to nine. 10 to nine. Hopefully we're gonna get over before any bad weather hits. Feeling very positive, feeling motivated, ready for it. Let's do it. We're getting there slowly but surely. It's tough. We've got um, 
sopping wet feet, wet boots, which are quite heavy. My tent is sopping wet, which is making my bag quite heavy. Um, there's no more track anymore. It's just kind of like wading through, through the long grass uphill, which is slow going, but we're doing it a little bit at a time. We'll get there eventually. to the top. I think a celebratory dance is in order. Yeah baby! Made it to the top! Made it to the top! Hell yeah! Now the last 100 metres of the climb had taken some serious effort as it had been a true scramble but little did we realise the way down would be even more fiddly. unnecessary wasn't it my bad knee had already started to ache as I jolted it a few times slipping on the rocks and we still had 650 meters of descent to go with heavy packs the trail was rocky and waterlogged so progress was slow but the views down the Glen were keeping up our spirits and I thought a little light entertainment might help us pass the time She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. When she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. When she comes. Woo! She'll be coming oh. round the mountain. Coming round the mountain. Coming round the mountain when she comes. <laughs> I can't do this. I need both bowls. We finally made it out of the rocky section. Hashtag not dead yet. What's in your mouth, Steve? Nuts! Uh, nuts! He's got nuts in his mouth! That's what he's got! I had to dig to the bottom of my pack for my knee support. This descent had been a little bit brutal. It's been a tough section. We're shattered. Let's get to that pub. There's a pint of Guinness with my name on it. Arrgh. We pushed through the last few miles as quickly as we could and finally we got our first glimpse of Shield Bridge. I'm not going to lie, it was a feeling of relief and we limped into the hotel bar just as the heavens opened yet again. Here we go, stage 7 on the Hiker app. Today we would try and get towards the top of the Falls of Glomac, which were at the top of a 500 metre climb. The storm last night had been wild, but brief, which was lucky for us, and having hot showers and a night in a real bed had done wonders. <laughs> yeah. We have just picked up our first resupply boxes from Kintail Crafts, which is just here on the road. Um, I forgot how much I'd put in my box and so now my bag weighs a ton. I think I've got way too much food now. So with our bags back up to around 17 kilograms with another week's worth of food packed, we left Shield Bridge ready for the next section. We've got dry feet, we've got clean clothes and we've got plenty of food. So we've got a lot to be grateful for and on we go. Excuse my thumb there, photobombing the shot. We'd been keeping a close eye on the weather reports and although we were due some high winds and rain this afternoon, it was supposed to die down this evening, so we thought it should be okay to wild camp up near the falls. We had around 8.5 miles to do today and although once again the ground was soaked, the walk was very pleasant.
just a quick reminder, you can find two alternative versions of the Cape Wrath Trail, plus hundreds of other great trails on the Hiker app. I'll leave a link to it in the video description. Well, we had dried our boots out in the hotel, but that didn't last long. Just a quick tip, if you are planning on doing this trail, take multiple pairs of waterproof socks. I only brought one pair, which I broke on day two. Talcum powder for your feet at night also helps a bit. So funny story, we just walked like about a mile in the wrong direction and had to <laughs> retrace our steps and get back on the original path. I'll show you on the map where we went wrong. Where we went wrong. So at this point, we were supposed to leave the main trail and head off left down and over the bridge, but we'd missed it and ended up somewhere off the map over here. Just a shame it was in the piss and rain. But we're here now. We've made it to the bridge and now we're going up through the forest. Having a sausage roll in the rain. Is it soggy? Yeah, a little bit. There is nothing like a soggy sausage. We were now back on the right path. It was nice to have a solid track for a while instead of trudging through mud. It was especially nice for Steve on this section. As I mentioned before, he had attempted this trail a few years ago, but stopped at Shield Bridge, so this bit was all new for him. We stopped for a lunch break just before the weather started to turn. We'd hoped we could get to the plateau and set up the tents before the weather really got bad. When we get a dry night so it all goes down a bit. Well, <laughs> let me give you a little update of today. So we made it pretty much to the top of the climb up to the Falls of Glomac and then an almighty bloody storm came in. Wind like you wouldn't believe, rain, like the forecast said it was meant to kind of die down um, as the day went on. That's the only reason we kept going because we thought, oh yeah, you know, it's a little bit windy but it's going to die down by the time we get up there. Obviously we arrived a little bit too early, it's died down now, but we must have arrived right in the bloody peak of it. So we were like, what shall we do? Um, I was just, do you know when you get so wet and so cold that you can't feel your hands anymore and they, they don't work to do anything. I was like, right, okay, let's pitch my tent quickly because it's easier to pitch than Steve's is in bad weather. So let's just get in there, warm up, you know, wait it out for a couple of hours and then we'll think about pitching yours. Um, so we did that. It was just a nightmare trying to put it up because my hands just wouldn't work. My fingers just wouldn't move like they were just so cold. But we managed to do it in the end. Uh, Steve was sat one end of the tent trying to hold the poles outside and I was sat the other side <laughs> trying to warm up because I was just freezing we got this we got the emergency blanket out <laughs> so this is this is our update we um have got a bit of a storm come in we've had to pitch my tent really early just to get out of it out of the wind it's uh, ridiculous we've had to just try and warm up and survive so we uh got the little survival blanket out just trying to warm up hoping the tent doesn't collapse on us yeah waiting it out and i'm holding the tent pole <laughs> steve is holder of the pole <laughs> he's holding his pole and uh, yeah We're waiting it out we've got a can of ginger beer though so you know party time <laughs> And um, the weather report said it was meant to calm down at five o'clock. It's four o'clock now, so we're crossing our fingers and our toes and everything else. That, um, which are numb, by the way. Which are numb, <laughs> that uh, the weather hasn't lied. 
and we're going to have a nice dry night. The winds are going to drop. We shall see. Hello. <laughs> we're in the tent. It's stormy. Waiting for the winds to die down a bit. Finishing up my sausage roll. <laughs> mm. Survival situation. Anyway, it passed over and we have managed to get Steve's tent set up. Um, this is the worst pitch I think I've ever done in my life. I'm not only sliding down towards the bottom of the tent, but also on a diagonal towards one side. So I'm kind of going, <laughs> I'm having to like place all of my bags of things uh, one side of the airbed to try and so I don't slide out the tent. But we're safe, we're still alive. And tomorrow's meant to be a much better day to uh, go down the falls, thank goodness. So fingers crossed, pray for us that it is because we just want to get down now. <laughs> Good night, everybody. morning everybody right update we survived the storm last night just about everything is piss wet through everything our sleep systems our our sleep mats our sleeping bags everything is saturated the ground is just so wet that the rain came down so heavy it was meant to stop at a certain time and just all through the night it was raining. It's come up from the ground. Our tents, the, the bottom part of our tents have failed. All water's got in from that. I mean, we're having to make a really tough decision now because um, today looks like it's going to be quite dry up to a certain point till about five, I think. And we're thinking, oh, we could see if we could get to the bothy and, you know, dry our stuff out and carry on and everything will be fine. But what if we don't get to the bothy and what if we get there and there's no firewood or you know I'm absolutely gutted and like really really emotional because all we wanted to do was just finish this trail but everything has been against us and I just don't feel comfortable putting either of us in a situation like again like last night I mean after today, the forecast is again predicted storms, really high winds. We've still got some high altitude bits to do. And I think after everything that's been thrown at us, we're just exhausted. You know, it's taken us 12 days to get here when it should have taken us six, uh, all due to weather. And I think we're just gonna have to call it a day for now because we're soaking wet through. Everything we own is, is wet and it just wouldn't be safe. And the last thing we wanna do is put ourselves in a position where we have to call up mountain rescue and put them in danger, um, having to hike up here. So I'm absolutely gutted, but we're going home. But we will be back, <laughs> we will be back. And you know, there's plenty more trails, plenty more days, and we've gotta just do the safe thing, I think. I feel like I'm gonna cry, but, you know, we're gonna go back. I'm gonna walk down to the shop, I'm gonna grab us a bottle of wine, and we're just gonna get pissed and play pool, dry out our stuff, get home, live to hike another day. Doing the sensible thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry we didn't make it to the end, but we'll be back to complete it next time. <laughs>